The mega secretary works with these four agents built with NAN. First is the email agent I'm showing here. This agent can send and reply via email, label emails, draft, receive emails, receive labels, and mark on red. Next is the calendar agent shown here. It can update events, create events with other people, get events, and delete events. Next is the content creator agent that can research and make blog posts. Last is the contact agent. It can receive, add, and update contacts in our Airtable database. Almost forgot our agent uses our Tavily as well. The Tavily tool is great for internet searches. Now let's check out some demo tools and see the functionality. Set up a meeting with Nate for 1800 and send a confirmation email. Okay, so Telegram just sent that audio, the audio was transcribed, and now our mega agent is deciding the next steps. First, it used the contact agent to grab Nate's email. Now it's using the calendar and email agent together to create an event like you can see here and send over the email. Now we have the response that shows the event was scheduled and the email was sent to Nate for confirmation. If we open our email, we can see that the agent was able to send the confirmation request as well. If that time didn't work, we can push it back an hour. Reschedule the meeting for an hour later. All right, the agent is processing that request like before. The mega secretary has memory, so it understands the request to reschedule that meeting. Just hit the contact agent, now the calendar and email agent. Look here, we see the new meeting time. And looks like the agent responded, letting us know the meeting was rescheduled and a new confirmation request was sent out. Perfect example why this is our mega secretary. We didn't even need to request a follow-up email to be sent. It understood the job and took initiative. Here is the follow-up email that was sent. Okay, we got a response from that confirmation email. Let's use our secretary to automate a reply for that one. Please reply back and let them know I'm okay. Okay, so that was sent off and we'll go through the same circuit like before. Let's check out the result. Then we can dive deeper into how this worked. Looks like our agent responded. I have replied with your message, I am doing well. If there is anything else you need, let me know. See that email response here? Now let's take a look under the hood. Here is the execution of the email agent. See here it hit the email reply tool. Great because it will put it in the same thread, but it looks like we need a message ID and we can't get that until we get all the email information. So first the email agent needs to grab emails from our colleague. See here it pulled in the sender, which is the address. Then it looked through the email to grab the ID you see here before plugging that into the reply tool. That process is how the email agent replied in the same thread. Don't sleep on how amazing that logic is. And I want to show an example of labeling emails because the label tool needs a message ID and it also needs a label ID. To label emails, the agent needs to get all messages and labels, then feed the IDs to the label tool. Let's try that. Label my recent email is high priority. Email agent looks good so far. Let's see the results. A reply from the agent says the email was labeled high priority. And if we look at our email, we see the high priority label here. This is the most recent email agent execution. You can see here it filled out the parameters for label and message ID. Those came from the get email tool and get label tool like we said before. Super dope. All right, let's try another one. Make a blog about DeepSeek and put it in a draft email response. This response will go to the content creator agent that has a workflow to search the internet, pull articles, then use those to write a blog post. Then hit the contact agent to pull contact information for the response. Then use the email agent to draft the email. Side note, for the mega secretary, I use GPT-40 and the same for all these agents besides the creator agent, which uses Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Claude is just better for structuring human readable content in my experience. All right, let's go. The agent responded that the blog was created and placed in a draft email. Let's check that now. Okay, so see here the blog post is in the draft. It's written in HTML. Deep Seek Revolution AI with breakthrough technology and energy efficiency. We have headers with bullet points here, benefits, applications, challenges and concerns, and sources at the bottom. Pretty crazy how fast that agent can do this. Okay, last demo before we break down this build. Get my calendar availability for today and send that as a response email. Okay, hitting the calendar agent to check availability. The three times you see scheduled here should be logged as unavailable. Next, it should take that information, get contact information like before, then send a reply with our availability. All right, the agent responded confirming the request was completed. Let's check out our email. This is the response email here. You can see it noted the times I am unavailable, then explained what times I should be available. Okay, so this one has a lot of moving parts. So let's get started and I'll explain everything as simply as possible. We can start with input and output. We are using Telegram, so we have a Telegram trigger that is checking our messages. 
Those will be sent as either text or voice files. For voice, this switch checks for a voice file and sends those to download the file in Telegram and transcribe before going to the Mega Secretary. Now let's run an example with text. Okay, search the web for puppies. See that message goes down this path because the switch is checking if json.message.txt exists instead of voice file. Either way, both go towards the agent and let's check the response. Here are some interesting stories about puppies from the web. The Puppy Bowl, Paws, Chicago Pet of the Week, Heartwarming Puppy Videos, and another example. Each with a link to see more. That's how the search function works. Okay, so we are setting them both to equal a field called text. See here, this is used to map to text, so it will feed through so the agent only needs to find json.txt. Now I'm in the execution for voice. You can see the output of the transcribe node is a text field. So we feed the agent with json.txt so it understands both voice and text. Now the output is responding to the same telegram chat ID, so we pull the chat ID from the trigger. Then we output what the agent gave to the response node. Okay, so now let's look at the mega secretary prompt so we can understand things better. What's great about this framework is the prompt is not too long or complicated. Same with our other agents. The prompt is pretty simple. This is amazing because every agent has a specialty instead of using one super complicated agent with a giant prompt. In this case, the mega secretary is delegating tasks. Your job is to send the user's query to the correct tool. You should never be writing emails or creating event summaries, you just need to call the correct tool. Next we define the tool. Email agent to take email action. Calendar agent to take calendar action. Contact agent, content creator, and Tavly for web searches. We also added an important rule. Some actions require you to look up contact information first. For the following actions, you must get contact information and send it to the agent who needs it. You need contact information to emails or make calendar events. Next, this agent only needs one example to fit into the role. Here's an input. Send an email asking what time he wants to leave. First action, use contact agent to get the email. Next, use email agent to send the email. Pass the tool a query like send an email to ask what time he wants to leave and add the address. Last, we gave the agent current date and time. All right, how do we give the mega secretary access to our workflows like the email and calendar agent? The answer is tools. So we click the plus under the tools section, then hit the call in a in workflow tool. Now we need to set up a few things. First, we add a name that we define in the AI agent prompt. In our situation, we defined email agent and calendar agent. This box is case sensitive, so I just copy and paste. Once we are in the tool, we want to give it a name. Give it a description. For an email agent, we can say call this tool for email actions. Next, we grab it from our database. We can also use JSON, but we won't this time. Then we want to click the drop down and select the email agent or calendar agent. That's really it. So basically the mega secretary calls the tool for a function. That tool takes an action, then responds back to the secretary with the results. This section used to have a field to return input to fill out, but that is no longer needed. I still add my last node as a set node for response, but pretty sure you don't need that anymore. See this even says this tool will call the workflow you defined below and look in the last node for response. The workflow needs to start with an execution workflow trigger. This email agent starts with an execution workflow trigger, query is input, the email agent decides what to do, outputs a response, if it works the success node will notify us, if not the try again node will output this response that says unable to perform the task, please try again. This is nice because the agents will talk to each other more than just here's my query, here's my output. They have an extra layer of that didn't work, please try again. So that was a breakdown of the communication path. This is great because instead of having all email tools here and all calendar tools here, the secretary just sends it off once. Then the email agent can figure out the request and what it needs to do. Now let's open an execution to see an example from the demo. Let's use this 30 second one because it was probably more complex. So this agent only received a query saying create a draft email, including a name, email, and a subject, followed by the blog we wanted to send. Here's the same example where we asked for a label. The query received was label the recent email as high priority. The agent was able to understand the tools needed for the job. Let's see the email agent prompt. 
Like before, this prompt is very straightforward and easy to read. This is great because it makes it really easy to add more tools or agents later. Okay, the overview is you're an email management assistant. All emails must be formatted professionally in HTML and signed off. These are the tools you can use. Send email to send emails, create drafts, get emails, and get labels. Those are fine because the name is pretty descriptive, but these two need some more detail. Use mark unread to mark an email as unread. For label emails, we added you must use get email emails first so you have the message ID of the email to flag. Then use get labels so you have the label ID. Finally, same thing with email reply. Use get emails first so you have the message ID of the email to reply to. So it starts with the email agent being triggered by another workflow. Like we saw in the demo, when the mega secretary sends a query, it will hit the email agent. Then it will send something over. Then this node is where the email agent captures the query. Now over here is where we have two options for output. If success, we will return the output of the main agent back to the mega secretary. By setting this field to response, it will be looking for the JSON.output. Also, it's important to know that when you are setting up workflow as a tool, you can set Also, it's important to know when you are setting up workflow as a tool, you can see it says the tool will call the workflow you defined below and look in the last node for the response. The workflow needs to start with an execution workflow trigger. That basically means whatever agent you call at the start will look here for a response. The response is either success or try again. We set that up by going in the agent settings menu, then selecting on error, continue using error output. This makes it so if the agent has an error, it responds with unable to perform task, please try again. The mega secretary will read that message and try again. So instead of breaking down these individual tools and how they work now, I'll explain them in the next section because our from AI build pretty much uses the same method. So first we want to get inside our when executed by another workflow node and enter a query so we can text this environment easier instead of our mega secretary sending a query every time. And here I add in a query to send an email asking what's up and what his favorite color is. So this is the query the agent will receive. And this is very close to a query the mega agent would actually be sending over. So let's hit play to start the email agent thinking. We know it only needs to send an email tool and notice it didn't use the other one. But how did it know that? It's pretty interesting actually. In this tool and all other tools I mentioned, we are using a function called from AI. Here it says use the expression from AI for any data to be filled by the model. This is actually super dope because in these parameters like who the email is going to, what the subject is, what the message is, we can just tell the AI to fill this in by itself from just a key and a definition. In this case, we don't even need a definition, just a key. So look here in the to field, we put from AI, then referenced email address. Based on the query received, it defines the email address shown here. Same for the subject, it determined and put that here. Then the body was intelligently added as well using HTML. That's how the from AI function can supercharge the workflow of creating agents, giving them tools and connecting them easily because we don't have to be as specific about subjects, messages, or things like that. We can general request and the AI will fill in the blanks. It's pretty crazy how powerful this function is. All right, making a new query here. Mark my received emails is unread, save that. Okay, let's send it and see what happens before taking a look inside of these tools. Like we mentioned, it needs to get emails first because the mark unread tool will need the correct message ID. So first thing is go into get email to set the sender. We can set this as a name that shows in Gmail or an actual email address. Next, we only need one email, so the limit is one. Then we grab the message ID shown here. Now in the mark unread tool, we just tell it to look for a response and a message ID, which it already did as you see here. Same exact way for the calendar agent. It uses these five tools and responds with success or try again. Success is the output. Try again just basically says try again. Again, the prompt is very simple, which is great. I'll show the prompt here for reference, but it works the same as we explained before. If you're curious why there is a tool for create event and create event attendee, this is because of the parameter called attendees. In here, it is not filled, but in this tool, it is. That means if you tried to create an event in this node without an attendee added, the request would fail. That's why we need both nodes, and we specify that if we invite someone, we use with attendee, and the basic create event node if not. Pretty much the same logic with deleting and updating event as our replying and labeling emails node from before, since it needs the event ID before being updated or deleted. Quick example of deleting an event. So we'll hit test workflow so the telegram agent will start listening. 
can you please delete meeting at 7 p.m. today? So that is going and should hit the calendar agent. Then it will grab the event, pull the ID, then delete the meeting. We can see that happen IRL here. Bow. That meeting is gone and the agent responded letting me know that was done. Now we have the contact agent. This is pretty straightforward. It just has nodes to get contacts and add or update contact. I show the system prompt here and it works just like the others. Provides an overview and specifies tools needed. Let's run a demo on this one. Let's spice it up. Instead of asking for a contact like before, let's have it change an email this time. Can you please change Michael Scott's email to michael at dundermifflin.com? That is sent and it's going to the contact agent like it should. Then we will see the air table here with the update. Bow, that just got updated to michael at dundermifflin.com from michael scott at dundermifflin.com. So that's how we can easily update contacts and pull them back with the contact agent. Last but not least is the content creator agent. Check it out. So in here, we have this prompt here breaking down the agent's job like before. It has an overview, tools, and blog requirements. Feel free to pause and check it out in detail. The use case is write a blog and send it as an email, but this can be used for other things like connecting to social media to automate posts, for example, or it can be integrated with Airtable or another database to constantly upload content that you can manually post when you want or connect to something else. So let's load up a quick execution of this agent for DeepSeek. We can see here it went to Tavoli, and what this did is send over a Tavoli post request that we see in this JSON body. And we are using a placeholder for any data to be filled in by the model. Just like the from AI function, but it's just a placeholder instead. So here you see the placeholder that we are searching Tavoli for is search term. Notice the curly braces. Then down here we define the placeholder name as search term and describe as what the user has requested to write a blog about. And that is a string variable. When this request goes to Tavoli in the body parameters, they're changing search term with DeepSeek. Search term DeepSeek AI features benefits applications in modern technology sectors. So just know placeholders work like the from AI function. All right, we made it to the end of this video. Really appreciate you guys watching. This is the third video I've made, so I would really appreciate a like if you thought this was useful. Good luck, and remember, have fun with it.